Hi folks, Rob Ager of collativelearning.com talking here. Uh, I've been watching the Michael Jackson uh, abuse allegation documentary, Leaving Neverland. I'd seen the media coverage of this and the media coverage seemed to gloat a little bit too much. Um, and when I was reading those news articles, I was surprised that there wasn't really much in the way of evidence that was being described. Um, basically, the, the news media narrative seemed to be these two guys seem so genuine in their allegations. It must be true. Um, and I thought, well, that's not really the basis for um, a trial by media to reach that kind of conclusion. So uh, I went and watched the documentary myself and I didn't find these two believable at all. Um, in particular, you know, a lot of people were saying, I was seeing people on Facebook saying that, oh, these guys seem really convincing and genuine, that there's no way they could act that. Uh, no, no, that is definitely not true. I've come across people in real life who can fake tears. You know, I've worked with actors who can actually make themselves cry on the spot. You know, within like about 30 to 60 seconds, they can make the tears flow big time. There are a lot of people around who can do that kind of acting. I've actually been in a um, a, uh, a court testimony situation myself where somebody who I worked with is, was accused of racism, uh, a resident in a hostel that I'd worked in, and I had to testify against her. And uh, she knew I was going to testify against her, and she waited outside the courtroom and just stared at me coldly when I was on the way into the building. And then once I was actually given my testimony against her in front of the judges, she was sat in the back of the room crying her eyes out, faking it, and doing a much more convincing job than uh, Wade Robson or James Safechuck do in this film. There are plenty of people around who have the motive and the ability to fake the kind of expressionism that these two guys uh, put forward in the Leaving Neverland documentary. Um, so there's a hell of a lot more I'd like to say about the body language and stuff and the facial expressions from these two guys, um, but I'm going to save that for another video. <clears throat> right now, what I want to talk about is just a simple, single issue that I have not heard talked about anywhere else. And there's there's lots of people out there who are doing really good um, breakdowns showing how this movie is just basically a load of garbage there might maybe there's some little bits of truth in it here and there but people are tearing this documentary apart um but yeah there's one aspect that i've not heard anyone really talk about much and that is uh the the editing in terms of the the interviews of the two main guys is very suspicious it's it's not very often that they stay on screen long uh, each of them has a, a sort of wide shot um, from in front of them and a close-up from up uh, and slightly to the side. Each of them has those two camera angles on them throughout their interviews. And the the edits keep switching back and forth between the two. Um, and at the same time, lots and lots of their statements in these interviews are being cut away to, um, be, sorry, are being cut away from uh, so that um, photos of Michael Jackson can be shown, photos of them as kids, uh, video footage of Jackson dancing or them dancing, um, or even stupid aerial footage uh, with piano music that's not even needed for the movie at all. Um, I, I was sort of asking myself, I was watching the film, why, why are these guys not on screen very long, uh, very much? Um, and I got the. I started to think to myself, I would like to see the full unedited interviews with each of these guys so that I can make a much better determination as to whether they are just acting and speaking scripted lines as part of um, a extortion plot against the, the Jackson estate um, or the Jackson companies, which, you know, both of them ha have been reported to have um, filed lawsuits to try and get money out of the the existing Jackson companies uh, and you know the courts have basically said no um, that doesn't really apply uh, which uh, that's a you know a one little weird aspect of this case is that their lawsuits uh, apparently alleged that the Jackson companies were complicit in Jackson's abuse and yet in this documentary they make no mention of that at all they don't talk about their lawsuits uh, they don't talk about anyone else being complicit in it um, just they just talk about Jackson himself. So that is a big discrepancy in the story right there. Um, so yeah, I wanted to see the full unedited footage so that I could be sure that these guys were 
um, actually being genuine in in the way that they're expressing these things because it's a lot harder to pull off an act like this that goes on for like an hour or two in unedited footage uh, and make that convincing um, a lot harder to do that than it is to just film little chunks of dialogue and try and get it right and then the director shouts cut and it's like let's run that again can you just look a little bit more sad there just look a little bit more pensive just pause on that line a bit more you know i'm not saying that the director has definitely done that but i wanted to check the um the footage and make sure whether that happened and so what i did was i went through the whole movie and i took screenshots periodically every minute or two um of the different camera angles of their interviews and what i was looking for was evidence of um multiple takes um such as props shifting around such as the lighting changing outside the windows um and especially uh, such as the camera angles slightly altering so the interviews consist of four main shots two wide shots each two close up shots each and so i took lots and lots of um timed photos sorry uh, screenshots uh with time codes on them uh of these four shots and then i looked at them all side by side and noticed that wow you know there are a lot of different camera angles going on here as you watch the movie because the way it's edited you think that there's only four camera angles of these two interviews but there are actually dozens and dozens of them um a major one here that's uh, sort of freaked me out was throughout the movie, uh, uh, you know, the camera angles slightly change in the wide shots of uh, James Safechuck. Um, and you get these couple of items of furniture and this painting on the right screen in the back. Um, but at one point in the film, the, the furniture changes entirely and suddenly you've got this big couch that appears across the back the painting is still there, but the couch is completely different. And James Safechuck's yellow chair has gone and been replaced by a smaller chair that's so small that we can't even see the sides of it. Um, and so I was like, what? Why has the furniture suddenly changed? And then, you know, I looked at the, the details of the interview and I realized that, hey, this is because um, James is now talking about these rings, which he alleges that Michael Jackson gave him as a sort of wedding vow type gesture uh, you know a lover's gesture <coughs> which uh, struck me as a little bit corny to be honest um and the fact that he said that adult rings have been bought um um and that they pretended that they would fit him that struck me as a little bit weird you know um if Michael Jackson wanted to buy him child size rings I'm sure he could have done it you know it, it seemed like an excuse for the fact that the the rings are not actually child size rings they could be anybody's rings so i don't even believe that story in the first place but the furniture change in here is interesting because i had to think about this to figure it out what seems to have happened is that the main interviews for each of these guys have been filmed in their respective homes i think it's their own homes that they've been filmed in and the idea of putting the rings into the movie has come along later it's either either the rings have been found by James Safechuck and he's remembered if if the story is actually true, or the um, the 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 story about the rings has been concocted and faked, and then it's been agreed that okay, well we need to film this because it's not in your interview, so we're going to have to go back and set up a similar shot uh, to what we did for your main interview. And then it's a case of well, hold on, I've changed my furniture. I don't have the yellow chair anymore, and the other stuff is gone. So how are we going to get the same shot? Okay, we'll make sure that that painting is up in the corner there. And let's make sure that you've got the exact same clothes on that you had before. The white shirt underneath the grey top and the blue jeans. And make sure you've got pretty much the same amount of stubble. Um, you know, get everything as close as possible. But they just simply didn't have the ability to get back the furniture that was used before. Um, and so the lighting is slight, uh, quite a bit different in this shot, and the um, the furniture is totally different. So, uh, but that in itself doesn't prove that what Safe Chuck is saying is completely wrong. But it does show a certain amount of deceptiveness, trying to give the impression of a interview that is all filmed 
in a streamlined way at the same time, when actually it's probably been filmed months apart, hence the change of furniture. So that's one big thing that came up when I was looking at this. Um, also, regarding the Wade Robson uh, wide shots, the curtains in the background shift around quite a lot throughout the movie, and um, the lighting changes. Sometimes it's really dark, sometimes the light is coming through at the back, sometimes it's coming through at slightly different angles, and so on. And the, the camera itself alters its position from time to time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and here we have um, behind Wade, behind his chair on the left, uh, there's some object that appears a couple of times and disappears in other shots. And uh, a glass appears in shot and then disappears as well. You know, those, those are major continuity errors. And the, the actual lamp in the corner, um, uh, the lampshade tilts back and forth between different shots. So, you know, it's... Um, it's clear that the lamp has been picked up and put back there uh, between different takes. So my impression is that um, the these wide shots of Wade haven't just been filmed in one chunk. Uh, they've actually been filmed um, on multiple occasions. And so you get the same thing with each of these four shots, the two close-ups and the two wide shots. Each of those four shots changes continuously throughout the movie. There are some points where the same, the exact same camera angle and lighting is maintained for a few cuts uh, between that angle. Um, but a lot of the time it changes. And especially interesting to me was that it changes when Wade is talking about his, um, his apparently being abused by Michael, Michael Jackson. Uh, the, the footage of him um, really changes a hell of a lot as if there's been lots of takes been done. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the whole point of this little video that I'm doing here is just to show you that uh, these are not continuous interviews. It's not like there's been a stream of consciousness and it's just like, okay, we're going to sit down and you just blurt it all out from start to finish and we'll just record the whole thing and we'll just edit it into the movie. No, um, these two guys, their stories have been edited, uh, sorry, filmed in chunks and there have almost certainly been multiple takes done of those chunks of dialogue. And then when it comes to the editing room, the best parts have been picked in order to make the performances look as genuine and convincing as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to let um, each of these screenshots fly by. <clears throat> I'm going to show you them in the chronological sequence that I took them. I'm going to start with... Um, all of the close-ups of um, James Safechuck. Then I'm going to show you all of the close-ups of Wade Robson. And then I'm going to show you the, the wide shots of each. And in each instance, I'm showing you the photos in chronological order as they appear in the film. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to notice plenty of other discrepancies in this footage. And feel free to throw your comments into the comments section there because there's probably plenty that I've missed as well. Uh, okay, so I'm planning on doing more videos on this Michael Jackson issue because I've been studying the movie and I've been noticing a lot of discrepancies. I'm not claiming that I definitely know 100% that Michael Jackson wasn't a paedophile. I don't know that. And by the way, uh, my uh, the word paedophile, that's how we pronounce it in UK. We don't pronounce it pedophile. I'm from the UK, so I pronounce it the way we do as paedophile. So I'm not 100% um, saying that Michael Jackson definitely wasn't a paedophile in any way, shape or form. I mean, it's very hard for anyone to say that with absolute certainty. I mean, even about any adult. Um, but I do very strongly believe that these two in this film are lying. Um, and I haven't taken screenshots of the other family members in their interviews because as far as I'm concerned, their interviews are... Um, pretty much irrelevant because none of them claim to have even witnessed any sexual abuse. So basically their interviews amount to nothing more than, well, our family member says that they were abused and we believe them. So, you know, somehow that's supposed to convince us that it's true. And to me, that doesn't carry any weight. Um, and I also suspect that some of the family members, not necessarily all of them, some of them are in on a uh, extortion plot by uh, James and Wade against the remaining Jackson companies. Um, I know that's a bit of a hefty thing to say, but a lot of people are um, saying it. It is my opinion, and I'll be 
describing more of that in some more videos uh, about the uh, Leaving Neverland documentary. Okay, so I'm going to let those little uh, screenshots roll for you and you feel free to comment. Um, if you're not familiar with my videos and you like this kind of study uh, of movies and documentaries that are out there, then, you know, subscribe, especially, you know, if you're a, a if you're into Michael Jackson stuff or you're, you're interested in the Michael Jackson issue and you want to know more about that, I will be posting more about it. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, this is Rob Ager signing off. Bye for now.